AMD is launching a couple of new Ryzen CPUs called the Ryzen 3000 XT series, so basically a new top spec Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9, and today I'll be taking a look at this new 12 core Ryzen 9 3900 XT. Now it's gonna be just a quick one because it is pretty much a small refresh and it's not something new that will suddenly change the whole market. Now this Ryzen 9 will come in at the same price as the original X series, so that is $499 or around 530 euros, but do remember that the original 3900X is currently selling for around $100 or euros less than that. So let's see how it performs and how it compares to the 3900X as well as to the 10-core Intel Core i9-10900K and ultimately let's see which CPU makes the most sense to buy at the moment. Let's go! This video is brought to you by Corsair and their K95 RGB Platinum XT mechanical keyboard. The new K95 features a beautiful aluminum design, Cherry MX switches, dedicated media buttons with an extra row for dedicated macro keys, extra durable PBT caps and a very comfortable and soft wrist rest. Check it out using the links in the description below. For those of you that aren't really into processors, the AMD Ryzen CPUs have been doing extremely well in recent years and the 3000 series especially so. Now, they've been beating Intel's desktop and Intel's mobile alternatives at most workloads, at efficiency and at pricing, so if you were looking to buy a new PC in the last year or so, an AMD system just made more sense in most cases. Now, there was still just one thing that Intel objectively managed to do better, and that is pretty much offering better gaming performance. Now, usually only slightly, but there were some cases where the margin that Intel had was just quite big. And this is where this new XT series comes in, promising to improve that single core performance and with that, improve that gaming performance. So the main change here is really simple. These new XT CPUs basically have a higher boost speed than their predecessors. So the 3900X was rated at 3.8 gigahertz base and 4.6 gigahertz boost, and the XT here ups the boost to 4.7 gigahertz. There are no other major changes to the processor itself, it is still a 12-core CPU with multi-threading, but now with slightly higher single-core boost speeds. Now, there is also one big change that you should know about that has nothing to do with the CPU itself, and that is that AMD now ships these XT CPUs without a cooler, saying that enthusiasts looking for the best performance will just buy a better cooler anyways. Now, there is some truth in that. Uh, anyone considering this XT won't really use a stock cooler, and it's probably, let's call it, more responsible to not send out larger packages and hardware that many people won't use at all. But it is also a cost-saving measure that you, as a buyer, don't necessarily benefit from. I'll give you an example. If your nice water cooler that you bought just broke, having a stock cooler as a backup while you wait for the RMA, which can take a couple of weeks, can be an actual benefit. So, for my comparison here, I put this new Ryzen CPU into the exact same test rig that I used for my Intel Core i9 versus Ryzen 9 video. I'm gonna link it up here. A Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme motherboard, NZXT Kraken X52 cooler, 16 gigs of 3600 MHz C16 Corsair Dominator Platinum memory, MP510 NVMe SSD, also from Corsair, 850 watts Seasonic Prime Platinum power supply, and of course, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. Looking at a couple of standard benchmarks first, uh, we can see that AMD's higher single core boost seems to work as intended. Now, the difference here isn't that big, but those 2.5% is just enough to actually beat Intel in the Cinebench 20 single core benchmark. In anything multi-threaded, uh, AMD was already considerably faster than the Intel Core i9, and that pretty much remains unchanged. Now, do note that in my multi-threaded applications, the older 3900X scored just higher on average, but this fraction of a percent differences are just too small to be seriously taken in consideration. So, for any workload that is completely multi-threaded, like Blender, for example, there is really no reason to spend more money on this XT, as all core boost speeds haven't changed at all. But how does it affect games, since those often require just one core to do a lot of work, and unfortunately, not as much as I actually hoped. 
Now we definitely see some small couple of percent improvements in 1080p benchmark specifically. However, at higher resolutions, those mostly disappear, which kind of makes sense as higher resolutions are mostly GPU bound. Even though AMD improved speeds a bit, as you can see in some games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where AMD now just takes the lead from Intel, there are still a couple of results where the game simply runs better on Intel architecture and 100 megahertz extra just doesn't do enough to beat that. Now this effect becomes especially relevant in competitive titles at 1080p if we're looking at 240 FPS performance. Now AMD has definitely improved here too and still does really well in general, but it doesn't really change the fact that if you just care about gaming and nothing else, especially for those people that have 240 hertz monitors and expensive peripherals to gain every little bit of advantage over your opponent, Intel still has a slight advantage. Now, while this small improvement is, let's call it a bit boring, let's not forget that this CPU is extremely good. It is faster than Intel's even more expensive 10 core i9 in most applications. Uh, it still does extremely well in games, especially if you game at uh, Quad HD or 4K resolutions, and it's still much more power efficient. Now, even if you don't care about your energy bill, just remember this. It means that you can combine the 3900X and the 3900XT with cheaper motherboards than the i9 and you don't necessarily need to buy an expensive cooling solution like you do with Intel. So this is an objectively great CPU, but it left me wondering, who is it for? I know we know Intel is in trouble, really holding onto their last two straws, which are gaming performance and reputation, and this XT launch doesn't really take the gaming crown from them, and I don't think it will change the mind of anyone who already preferred Intel for personal reasons. But I'm also not sure that the performance benefit will convince AMD fans to spend 100 euros or dollars more than they would on the 3900X. Now, I really wish that AMD had also managed to increase all core performance a bit to give this XT just a bit more of an advantage over the older X version. Please don't get me wrong here. There is definitely a good argument to be made here as this is now pretty much the best 12 core CPU AMD has to offer. And if you want an AMD system and you play a lot of games, the extra performance is really nice. But the 20 to 25% price difference is much bigger than the two to 3% performance difference in some applications. And if you really insist on getting the best performance, you're probably already looking forward to see what AMD's new Zen 3 CPUs will bring later this year. Now I know that with every new product a better one can be expected in a year or two later, but AMD themselves have said that there will be a completely new Ryzen series within six months, and if the Zen 3 improvements are half as good as the improvements that the Zen 2 brought, you should pretty much expect that these new CPUs later this year will do better in every application. So which CPU do you buy if you need a new system today and you cannot wait for Zen 3? If you're on a budget, uh, the Ryzen 5 3600 is uh, super cheap and should remain the choice for gamers looking for the best value CPU today. And I don't really think that the more expensive 3600 XT will change that fact at all. Now, if you mostly care about competitive games, nothing else, and every single frame counts, you'll still want to look at Intel. And if you need a great all-around CPU for gaming and for productivity, I would personally buy the original 3900X over the XT because paying 20 to 25% more for 2 to 3% performance difference that you will never really notice is just very hard for me to justify. So that makes this 3900 XT only for people that really want an AMD rig right now for both gaming and productivity. They cannot wait for another couple of months and insist on buying the best performing one, even if it costs $100 more. Now that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a like and follow this channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one guys. Bye.